So this is part three of our insider complete guide to getting approved for social security disability. So today we're going to talk about the importance of onset dates and whether you should appeal an onset date and what's the difference between SSDI and SSI and can you get both and kind of an overview of the entire process in terms of initial claim and uh, the reconsideration and all the different appeals and how to go about that and how to request a good cause if you need it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Decision also has to be made on, it's the EOD or the AOD or the POD. So these are basically onset dates. So once you're approved, you know, your onset date, that's will be, that'll be a critical piece of information that you'll need. Um, basically, you have a potential offset onset date, uh, one based on technical factors, and then you'll have an alleged onset date, which is basically when you alleged your disability began, and then the actual onset date, the established onset date is when the DDS determines that your disability actually began. So for a traumatic injury, let's say if you're in a car accident and that happened February 2023, that's a pretty easy, you became, you were dis, not disabled one day and then had the car accident and the next day you became disabled. So that happened in February. So your established onset date is obviously February. But other conditions, so for non-traumatic injuries, non-traumatic disabling conditions, it's a little harder to figure out. Usually it's, um, another is when you actually stopped working. So if you became disabled and you were working um, and you just tried to push through uh, another month, another month, another month, even though you were disabled, you were still working for social security, that means you weren't disabled. Unfortunately, that's just the way the, the system works. Um, so if you're working, if you're still able to work, you're not disabled. But once that disabling condition just completely ends your ability to work, the, uh, the onset date starts on that particular month, right? And sometimes it might last a little bit longer. So the onset date is very important. One of the things that people complain about once they get approved is they disagree with that particular onset date. And people ask me all the time, it says, well, I told them that I was disabled a year before that. And, but, you know, so I, I'm losing a year of benefits and you can file an appeal with social security. You can file an appeal about everything. And I'm going to talk about filing an appeal and everything, but you can file an appeal. So you file and you said you became disabled in February of 2022. Social Security came back and said, okay, you're disabled, but we're going to start your benefits in February 2023. There's also a five-month waiting period. Everybody waits five months, so nobody gets disability for the first five months. So, But in terms of the onset date, it comes back a year late. And you say, I disagree with that. I'm losing you know, months of benefits. I want that money. So I want to appeal that decision. That's fine. But you also have to understand, you have to take the risk of you're requesting that they reopen your case. So you re request the reconsideration of the onset date, and then it goes through the entire process again. They go back to the disability determination services, and they look at everything again. And a second set of eyes just might say, why did they approve this person the first time? I not only agree with the onset date, it, but it should never have been approved for disability. So you just have to be aware if you're requesting a reopening based on the onset date, uh, you know, you have to understand that there's risks involved. And another thing I want you uh, to be aware of, um, when you file for Social Security Disability, which is SSDI, this is Social Security Disability Insurance, there is also SSI, which is Supplemental Security Income. And SSI is a welfare-based program. Right? SSDI is what you actually paid into. You've got your, you know, 10 years of coverage and, you know, you're through your FICA taxes. SSI is a welfare-based program. That's for people that are low income, that didn't really pay into very much, or they 
not insured at all and they're disabled or they're aged 65 years or older. When you file for Social Security, each employee is supposed to address what we called internally both programs. So if you file for Social Security Disability Insurance, the employee also has to address the SSI part. And what we see happening is they just don't have time to explain that part of it. And then you apply for disability insurance and you've, you know, you've been working for 30 years and you're obviously insured for that. You're currently insured. And then a week after you apply, you get a denial letter in the mail and people, you know, send their comments in, contact me and said, I, I just proved last week and they already deny me. I immediately ask, what does it say on the top of the letter? It says supplemental security income. There you go. You were denied for the SSI portion. Your SSDI, they're continuing that and you know doing the technical evaluation and sending it to DDS. But the SSI part, you were denied. Why? Um, either you refuse, they talk to you and said, uh, you know, do you want to file for the welfare based program? And you say no. So they send you a letter and said, hey, you refused. Or um, your SSDI, when it's approved, it's going to be over you know, the, the, the very low income for SSI, the welfare-based program. So if you're going to be getting, you know, $1,500 or $2,000 or $2,500 from disability, once that's approved, then SSI, you're not qualified. If you have, you know, cash in the bank, you know, a few thousand dollars in the bank or, you know, 401k or something, then you don't qualify for the SSI. So unfortunately, uh, the uh, Social Security employees don't uh, take the extra time to explain that and say, hey, you're going to get a denial in the, in, in the mail. Just don't worry about that. That's the SSI part. Sometimes people can get both. So if your disability insurance is, let's say, based on your work, you didn't work very much, and your disability insurance is, let's say, $400, the SSI, let's say, it changes every year. Let's make it easy, $900. It's what, $943 this year. But let's make it $900. So you're going to get, how much did I say, $500? So if you're going to get $500 on your own, Social Security said they're also going to give, make a, a decision on your SSI. So they'll give you the 500 on your own once your disability is approved, and they'll give you another $400 on SSI for a total of $900. So people, there are millions of people that have SSI and SSDI. So those are the differences uh, of the two different programs and what to watch out for. And uh, again, as I say in all these, um, just relax. We're going we're gonna to go through this whole thing together. If you have questions about your particular case, again, uh, the comments down below or join my uh, weekly Thursdays, 4 o'clock West Coast time um, live to ask all your questions. And uh, we're going to, you and I are going to go through this whole thing together um, and reduce as much stress and, as possible. And uh, we'll do our best to get you approved and get you the money you're entitled to. Let's go through the, uh, the kind of the overview, the appeals process. And then in the next video, I'm going to give you 10 insider tips, tricks, and secrets on uh, how to put together the best case to get approved. So the, uh, once you file your claim for disability, that is the initial claim. So again, it's sent up to DDS and they make the decision. And if they come back and they said, you're denied, then you have the appeal right. So within about 60 days, Social Security just gives you a five days kind of wiggle room there. And if for some reason you miss that letter that you were denied and you don't get it within, you know, you don't file an appeal within 60 days, you can file what's called a good cause letter. And a good cause letter is, you know, okay, um, I've, you know, I got word, you know, three months ago, four months ago that I was denied, but, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, I missed the deadline. I moved or I didn't get the letter to begin with or whatever the case may be. So you just write down why you didn't file the appeal within, you know, the 60, 65 days. And I've received, you know, thousands of those good cause letters. And you know, I personally, I don't think I've ever denied one of them you know, three months, four months, five months down the line, people say, well, you know, I moved, I didn't get the letter, you know, I was, uh, I was dealing with my, my disability. 
Um, and I just couldn't go through the bureaucratic rigmarole and I didn't have Ed to walk me through the whole program. So, uh, yeah, I just missed, uh, you, you just write it, you, you file the reconsideration. So it's SSA 561, you file that reconsideration. Um, again, SSA 561, super, super easy, short little form, put your name, social security number, address, phone number. There's a couple of three lines there that says, you know, you just put down, Hey, I disagree with your decision. I, I believe I am disabled. That's pretty much all you need to write. And then you can add another piece of paper on there. You can also download the, the form. It's a SSA 795, but you just put your own little piece of paper and attach it on there and say, um, the reason I didn't do it within the 60, 65 days is because of, you know, I didn't get the mail or, you know, I moved or, you know, whatever the case may be. And then you just submit that to the Social Security Administration. And anytime you submit documents, you take it down to the office, um, you know, hand it to them, have them make a copy of it, stamp it. The employee can initial it or sign it or whatever and give you that copy back. And that way you've got proof that you actually have turned it in, right? In case something happens to it. So the reconsideration, sometimes Social Security, in particular states, they're trying this little trial where they're getting rid of the reconsideration part. But for the most part, the reconsideration pro part of the process is still around. So what is a reconsideration? A reconsideration is they're just sending it up back to DDS. They send it back to DDS and they have another person up there, a different person that made, then made the initial decision another person look at it again to see if the first person made the correct decision, okay? And then unfortunately that takes three, six, nine months or whatever, and you need to get the decision back and hopefully you're approved. If not, then you have to go through the rigmarole again, unfortunately. This time it's an SSA 501 and it's a request to see a judge, administrative law judge, uh, the Office of Hearings and Operations, the Office of Disability Adjudication. They, they change the name of this agency like every three months. It's hard to figure out what, uh, yeah. It's, but anyway, it's, it's ALJ, Administrative Law Judge. So you want to have your day in court. So you fill out the 501, do the same thing, make a copies and, you know, good cause if you're late, whatever. And you submit that and then they will uh, schedule you a hearing. Um, with the administrative law judge. And usually the administrative law judge has um, a lot more latitude in terms of decisions. So I've seen a lot of cases that, you know, the administrative law judge, you know, it's like, wow, that's interesting that they approve that, but hey, man, I guess more power to you. Um, but unfortunately that one takes a long time. I did a video on uh, the worst places in the United States to live and in terms of disability because those particular areas, those particular states, the to get a hearing takes forever. I think Georgia was like number one, 22 months. Yeah, it's uh, uh, the whole thing is un unacceptable. But you have your day in court, and we'll talk about more deal details on uh, the hearing and everything later. But I just want to give you kind of an overview. So if they deny that, then you can file for what's called an appeals council review. That's in Falls Church, Virginia. The appeals council. There's no day in court or anything like that. You don't really provide any new evidence. It's just you um, submit it and request the appeals council to review what the administrative law judge did. Okay. If they deny you there, then it would be federal district court and you just file a lawsuit against Social Security Administration, DDS. And if you're denied there, then I guess the final would be the Supreme Court. All right, so that is the overview and some tips, tricks, and secrets on uh, the uh, the filing process. And let me in the next video, I will give you ten insider secrets with all the details. And then um, in future videos, we'll go through more of the process and so make sure you like and share and all that kind of good stuff and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.